you get into camp, it can tell you a lot about your team. You know, you come out here, you can see uh, what type of, what type of players you have on your team. No matter how early it is, no matter what time it is, I'm gonna push myself to do what I gotta do. But you know, at times you don't want to get up this early, but hey, you gotta do what you gotta do to get to where you wanna be, right? Coach Teddy just mm -hmm. passed me. It's the uh, the fifth day of acclimation period, which means you can be in pads. You went helmets, helmets, shells, shells, and now the first day of pads. And uh, so I know the guys would be excited about that. Earning their trust is a product of caring about them, making sure that they're eating right, their nutrition's there, that we care about their academics, that we're engaged in their strength and conditioning, and making it a productive environment around them, I think, helped earn their trust. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. When I dreamed of the way my life could be, the places I would go, the things I would see, see, the worlds I would conquer, it called to me like, like a, a voice. voice somewhere so far away, somewhere out, out there. there. So I searched here, and I searched there, ever in hope of my dreams. I traveled the globe, only to come home once again. To find it. They're all along, waiting, waiting for, me. for me. For me. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Good morning. How you doing today? You fired up? Ready to go. All right. Definitely about to be late. Oh, we got to run. <laughs> All right, Kate. So I don't know if you want to get this. I got like three minutes to be there. Yeah, come on, Grim. You sit right here, baby. Yeah. So what's up? Y'all ready to practice, bro? <laughs> it's time to go, baby. Uh, it's, time, good. it's time to go. Feeling good. When we recruit young men, it's more than just football, and we make a big emphasis on making sure that they can reach their full potential in all parts of their life, academically, athletically, socially, spiritually, and that all the education is not in the books. You know, their, their daily life and what they do and what they encounter as a football player, time management, sacrifice, hard work, adversity, dedication, teamwork, all of it is an education not a lot of people get. What's up, Coach? How we doing today? Good. What's up, Keyshawn? Being from the Valley and being able to represent the Valley through Front of the State Football, take a lot of pride in it. I talk to guys like Marcus, who's from Danuba. I grew up in Kerman, you know. It's very surreal to us, you know, to be in the positions we are and how lucky and how blessed we are. I think what makes the Valley special are the people. I don't think there's any doubt about that, that, you know, it's just such a great place to be. There's such great support here for the football program and for the university, but friendships here and people here are so down to earth. It's just a pleasure to be around them every single day. Being a Bulldog means a lot, you know. When I got here, I just felt like it was home, like on my visit. I just felt like it was somewhere that I feel like I can prosper and do things the right way. Seeing the crowd and seeing what the Red Wave can bring, how much energy it can bring to the games on Saturdays, uh, I, just, I just knew that was something I wanted to play under. The grind never stops for us. And as you grow, not only as a player, but like as a man, you know, you learn like as a team how to treat one another. We grew up as brothers, you know, those first few years. I look like I've been taped, but I feel like I've been taped. Ha, ha, ha.
Yeah, he told me to tell you. He said, hi. Yeah, I will. Yeah, thank you so much. Yep. Will you see him? Yeah. Tell him I'm still going to sack it. All right. <laughs> Being from the Valley, I mean, it means the world to me to be able to come back and have the success that I'm having at the collegiate level. I mean, doing it in my hometown in front of his old high school coaches, um, family members, old friends. I mean, it just makes wins that much more sweeter, I guess you could say. Just seeing the smiles on everyone's face after the games, it just pushes you and motivates me that much more to, to come away with the win and just kind of continue growing every game. When the environment is positive, it makes you want to put in more work. And when you're seeing those guys set big numbers and reaching new heights, it makes you want to push more and reach new heights yourself. How you doing, Cyrus? Every facet of a program, be it from the training room to the equipment room to the strength and conditioning to the nutritionists to the recruiting department, you name it, every day there's something going on. So I'm so thankful for the people that run this, the people that are making sure our kids have water every day and every every drill and those type of things. It's There's a lot of people involved with the program. So we're really fortunate to have really good people that run those departments and uh, we're all on the same page. on the left, four kicks on the right, and we're out. Second time, second time we come through, okay, the first team will go, we'll have six different stations, you'll stay for six in a row, then the twos will come in with the next kicker, we'll go six in a row and we're out. Got me? Okay, wake your ass up, let's roll today. Know where your teammates at at all times, squeeze to the ball, always keep them, the returner inside and in front of you with leverage. Just so we know, it's Kwame's first one, what should he be doing here? Cannot do your own, own thing. Good thing it's on film. Okay, this is set front now, okay? Which way they set this front? All right, where's the tight, where's the down tight end? To the right, so KJ, where should you be aligned? The 2i, come on. That's not bad either, KJ, that's not bad there. Are we catching here with being aggressive? All right, after Dante's triple cheeseburger debacle yesterday, we're gonna have to rein things in a little bit, all right? So obviously encourage you guys to pop over to the weight room if you need to roll out or anything like that. When we recruit, we really look for what we call dog wire dudes. And what that means is hard nosed, blue collar, good kids who really want to play football and really want to get their education. So evaluation is, is always a big part of it. But to be able to get to know them and who they are and, and who their families are and if they're a good fit for our program, you know, and that goes hand in hand with being a good athlete and a good football player. Honestly, I love most about football is just the locker room. I mean, as far as the field, everything's fun. I mean, you're not going to remember all the touchdowns, and I know it might sound cliche and whatnot, but just the locker room talks, the locker room laughs, just everything that goes on behind the scenes in football. I mean, that's the stuff that I'm definitely going to cherish the most and just definitely trying to enjoy it in the moment right now.
bank stuff. Yo. the amount of success Coach Tefford's had with quarterbacks. So that was definitely a big deciding factor coming back to Fresno State and being able to pick that guy's brain and just learn from him every day is just something I, I really want to be a part of. Plan for Coach Tavert is great. You know he's gonna make sure you come out every day with a with a great attitude and uh, just the, the willing to work. No matter who you are on the field or what you have done in the past, he's gonna demand you to work every day. Keyshawn is a veteran, very experienced person, player. He's a great leader for the team. He's not really a vocal leader per se, but he's a guy who every day goes out and lays it on the line out there. And I think he has a great deal of respect from his teammates. <coughs> Gets to coach him here. McMarion, play action, gonna go deep. That's Johnson, and he's got it! And Johnson! The connection me and Keyshawn had last year was pretty electric, and he knows where I'm gonna put the ball before he turns around. And uh, just our receiving core as a whole, I mean, I always say I kind of feel like I'm a kid in a candy shop. Just all the options I have, just looking around from inside from the slot to the tight ends to outside receivers. I mean, I kind of have the cream of the crop. I guess you could say just throw wherever I want to throw and uh, just make sure I get those guys the ball and let them do what they do. <laughs> Here, your eyes sometimes don't always follow it, and then you drop it. Right. But if you can see it above your eyes, then you're going to catch it more often. On Brady, you ready? I don't really consider myself as a leader that speaks up all the time. You know, I, I try to be the guy that motivates. You know, I kind of lead a speaking. You know, to George, because that's what he do best. Like George, James Bailey. You know, Juju Hughes, them guys. I, I just want to motivate. You know, my teammates to give them all this year. You know, we trying to win a championship. We went to a championship last year. We fell short. This year, we just trying to win it all. Well, Jeff is a great young man. He's a very well-rounded young man. He's a 3.8 student. He's been through a lot of adversity in his life having two shoulder surgeries the last two years and come back and and he's doing a great job in camp. I would say he's the best linebacker in our league for sure and one of the top linebackers in the country. He's a great example for the rest of our team. I chose the number nine because of family reasons. Due to the death of my cousins, Jared and Jalen Mumford, who I was actually really close for. Jared's my best friend. You know, we went to middle school, high school together and I got a phone call freshman year and they told me that my cousins passed away in a car accident, both of them. And Jared was number eight in high school. Everybody knew him was Ocho. And Jayla was number two in baseball. Everybody calls him Deuce. So I added their numbers together. They gave me 10. And I said they took a piece of me and they left me with nine. So they gave me nine different reasons why I should still play ball and keep some of my future. The process for me to wear number nine, it, it was kind of a difficult process. Uh, you know, I didn't know too much of you know, Kevin Sweeney, I knew it was dad, Jim Sweeney, because Coach Tafford talked to us about it a lot. Once my cousin died, I went to go ask Coach Tafford and see if he could ask for him. Coach Tafford said, hey, if you want it, you got to ask him for it. You know, you got to earn it. So, you know, we called Kevin Sweeney. He told me, actually, for you to get that number, you got to earn it. You know, you got to be somebody that I could trust on the field, who will give it all, somebody who will get it all off the field. So I had to go through a whole little Overwatch program with Coach Tafford, make sure I gave him my all. And Mr. Sweeney said I did real good. And you see an effort I was putting in. He knew I was a family guy, and I know he's a family guy too. So, you know, he trusts me to boy his number. It's not that bad, bro. It's not that bad. 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 It's Marcus is a special person in that I think most of our success last year had a lot to do with his leadership qualities and for him to come in and fit in with the team and not come in with the ego or an attitude that he's coming from a Pac-12 school and he's the savior and all that. The team gravitated to him really quickly because of that. 
his sense of leadership is just something that you want to block for, you know, something that you want to protect, you know, you want to keep that guy safe because, you know, he really holds the team together. So I think he's much more mature than I was at that time, and he's much more gifted than I was. <laughs> When you are fortunate enough to have some success, expectations go along with it and attention. So it's really important that we handle it the right way and that we just stay focused on the process and we trust the process. To tell the kids don't pay attention to things, there's no such thing as that anymore because there's so many avenues for people to reach them and them see what other people's opinions are. It's really critical that we try to make sure that we talk about it. There's gonna be adversity through the year, ups and downs, and so we need to really stay true to what the process is. Tim. Hey, DeJounte. How you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Okay, do you know what you have to do today? Yeah, I got a discussion board post due uh, before 12. Okay, do you know the topic and everything? You're squared away for yeah. it, you understand yeah. it? Okay, so you have your final on Friday, last day of the class. I believe it's open all day, so double check that. And also I want you to review going into that final, because I want to make sure you get a good grade in the class going into the fall. Sounds good? Yep, sounds okay. good. So my philosophy is kind of centered around three pillars, injury prevention, athletic performance, and, and the mindset and the mental side of the game as well. When it comes to athletic performance, yeah, we bench, we squat, we power clean, we do it heavy, but we want to make sure that we're doing it safe with the correct technique. Every single day we're talking about how to approach situations, how to respond to adversity, how to just stay focused on the task at hand. In the weight room, it's chaos. We're flying all over the place, you know, the big weights lifting. Um, There's chaos with a purpose, like big lifters like Natani Muti and Jasad Haynes. Uh, those guys, when they're under the rack, you know, you just want to cheer for them. You want to, you know, uplift them, you know. It's always about getting that next weight and it's a celebration. To see former players go on and, and have success in the NFL at different levels, I'm really proud of them. I mean, there's a lot of gratitude that goes into that. Those guys have obviously worked very, very hard to get where they are. I feel really fortunate and blessed just to have been a small piece in their life and their development when they were in college. And it's spanned over many, many years. Trent Dofer from when I was very first here to see his growth and development as a young person into the man he is now such a great mentor to people and such a great person and so successful. You don't have to go to a Power 5 school to get in the NFL or do great things after college football. You can do all those things here in front of the state. Coach Tedford has a lot of coaching experience. The coaching staff he's built here and the culture he's built here, definitely a great spot for athletes who can definitely come here and do all the things you want to do. And we, we've put out guys like Derek Carr, Devontae Adams, we have like Ben Jacobs and you know a lot of other great, great players. And, in the NFL and Fresno State, I think is a, it could be a good vessel for football players to, to get to the next level. Even if he's off and right here, you're still going to go alert to that deep out and then just kind of cross. And as soon as he takes off, he'll jump the out. Okay, completion percentage wise, uh, pretty good today. Marcus, team period 18 for 20. That's 90%. So here's a look, young guys. You can see um, what what we're talking about. Checking the protections the right way. You just always pushing yourself to be a little bit better. Opening day, opening game of the year against Idaho. I'm just looking forward to the Red Wave and all of our fans showing up and showing out the way they did against Boise State. Because I mean, that atmosphere and the electricity that was kind of running through. I mean, the players we feed off of that kind of stuff, and it was really just driving us and. Uh, I'm excited just to be in the environment and just have fun and go out there and uh, just show up, really. Uh, during practice, during fall, what I see first day, I seen a lot of energy and a lot of people wanting to play and everyone just flying around, you know, with great attitude. So I feel like if we show what we showed the first day and we got third days in a fall camp and just grinding hard, I feel like we're going to come out and get, we're going to give a show. 
Uh, the thing I'm looking for the most is, for me, oh, yes, yeah, won the Mountain West Championship, but honestly, the first game, I'm ready for the, the crowd to be in there, to hear the chain and everybody fast on stage, just playing from the home crowd again. That's what I can't wait for. Having the support of the Valley and the fans in the stadium, especially on game days, it's another element. It's like the whole 12th man type of mentality. The energy that they create definitely transfers over to us and you know, creates a whole other kind of atmosphere where it makes Fresno a great place to play. It will mean a lot to us to win the championship this year. You know, we, we put in a lot of hard work during the spring, the summer, all the time. You know, nobody expected us to be what we was last year. You know, everybody predicted us to be last in our conference. And, you know, we, we proved them all wrong. And, you know, nobody really still has faith in us now except the Valley, you know, Fresno State. So we want to prove everybody wrong, you know, that Fresno State football is back. And, you know, that we will get them 110% no matter what. And if we fall short, we will come back next week and we're gonna work even harder. You know, we, we just trying to make this city proud again. When I was a child, I spoke, spoke as a child. child. I understood as a child. I, I thought as, as a child. child. Those, Those days, days are gone. gone. They, they are, are behind, behind me. me. Today, Today, I am a child, child no longer. longer. Today, I am, I am a man. man. Today, Today, I am Fresno State Bulldog. And a Bulldog, I will always be. Bulldog Warren, Bulldog Red.